Hey everyone, and welcome back to Community Month. Uh, we'll be uh, doing various collaborations with um, other Netrunner players from the community. And now that Magnum Opus is over, uh, we are going to have an, in, um, you know, a chat with someone uh, who did pretty well, to say the least. Uh, you might remember him. It's Alex Boreal, uh, fr whom we also interviewed back uh, for Euros 2018. Hi, Alex. Hi Ben, it's good to be back. Hope you have uh, more or less recovered from the jet lag. <laughs> I mean, I still feel it a little bit, but um, yeah, it's starting to drift off a bit. Right, that's good. I to can hear. feel. I can already feel. I can already feel the deck building brain fueling up again, ready for what's hopefully the unofficial more seasons of Netrunner to come. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, hopefully, I I can get in, uh, involved in that action as well. Uh, but anyway, uh, you did pretty darn well uh, in the past few tournaments, making top cut in basically both all three, uh, the big three, I should say, um, Euros, Nets, and finally um, the Worlds in Magnum Opus. So top sixteen Magnum Opus uh, did pretty well, um, and you brought with your uh, brought yourself. Uh, I mean, uh, re represented a shaper pretty well um, with Carbonessa Wu on, uh, during both Nationals and uh, Worlds, actually. But your I mean, shaper's, yeah. shaper's always been my thing. Yeah, I, I've yeah. played Shaper since at the start of the career, and I've very rarely drifted off from it. So it's pretty much like it's my my heart in this game has always been a Shaper. Yeah, for sure. Um, if you didn't, uh, if you haven't checked out my interview with Alex uh, for Euros, be sure to do so. We talk about your crazy professor deck uh, back there. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, let's talk about your court first. Uh, for Worlds, you brought some really evil brew um, in Scorpios. I mean, you call it evil, I call it efficient, you know. It works, I guess. Uh -huh. I think, yeah, I but think because so... Scorp was very underrated, <laughs> and no wonder why. There was a new NWL, and it got rid of a very core cool card in Scorp. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I, okay, I, I'll, I'll correct myself. Not so much evil as, you know, all the shot. It, it screams, torture, <laughs> um, card reading, and everything that an all the shot player would want their opponent to do. Yeah, I mean. Uh, Scorp was an interesting choice because I think after Nationals, we had a big talk in the car on the right back. There was a bunch of Redox people driving back. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, we were discussing new MWL because I think it got announced the same day or during that weekend. And we just started going over what was potentially good. Um, and I think a, l a lot of us were talking about because Clan Vengeance was gone. So you had a lot more opportunity to use your hand than you would have before. Mm. And... I think it was like a couple of days after I was just like, I'm going to, I know Hunt the Seek is gone, but I'm going to see if I can make Scorp work because I'm just going to predict a ton of max plays at Worlds. Um, and it brought me back to a really old concept I had about uh, Salem's because I used to love Salem's as a card. I thought it was really interesting. Uh, but the problem with Salem's is like, you'd always have to burn one in order to know what's in the hand unless you guessed and then you'd have to pop another one. Yeah. And then I remembered a card called Standard Procedure. <laughs> which is very efficient at telling you what's in their hand. Yeah, I mean, it does. It, uh, it actually does good stuff. Besides revealing the hand, it also gives you money. So, pretty good. Yes, it's to to use a little gem of Alex White. It's the thinking man sweep sweep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, insert thinking man. Uh, thinking emoji here. Yeah. Right, but I, it, yeah. Besides that, to review hands, uh, you also run Ibrahim Salem. That's right. Uh, Ibrahim uh, is a really interesting asset to use uh, in this deck because uh, besides the sound of siege, Ibrahim just gives you constant information. It gives you the constant pressure of making them having to run him or having to run stuff uh, before you lose everything of value. Um, so, I mean, Ibrahim saved me a ton of games. So I played against a Max and I got rid of their knife and their spooned and removed them from the games. They couldn't even use them again. Um, it can help you trash breakers that they've been hogging in their hand, which they don't think you've seen yet. 
uh, he can put on so much uh, sort of a big tempo hit against a runner who like doesn't want to run but you force them to run yeah and I mean I was looking at your list and I thought okay um, I guess cards in my hand are not safe uh, since you can review them and trash them with Salem's and everything um, yeah. maybe I should install my cards as soon as I draw them that way they'll be safe I mean after all you don't have yeah. the seeker right Right. <laughs> That's exactly. But I do have the next best thing, which is Trojan Horse, <sighs> which everyone has said is a terrible card, <laughs> and I refute that. I think it's a great card. I think it has tons of value, because especially in a deck like this. So a lot of people who I played against again, or when I practiced with them who already knew the deck, they would install the cards and then they'd do aggressive runs. But then they realize, oh no, I don't have enough money. And then I Trojan Horse them. <laughs> so, and that was interesting as well. So I put up this list in Worlds and somebody went, um, I would swap the wraparounds for hatchet jobs. Yeah. And I thought, it's not, yeah. it's not a bad idea, but hatchet jobs are a bit too unreliable in that case because um, it means it's another card that I have to use to beat traces. It's also trashable. Mm -hmm. um, and wraparound has much more value because especially in a meta where there's a lot of Amakua, having a strength 7 barrier that you can, if you've removed their paper clips or whatever Tycoon or whichever barrier break they've got, Amakua really struggles against that. Yep. And I think that's slightly yep. more valuable than having the potential to bounce something back and then if I've got click their Salem's. Because I feel like Standard Procedure and Ibrahim already did that for me and I didn't need another one. Yep, that's very good logic there. And for those of you viewers who are scratching your head, Yes, Tycoon was a barrier for Rap Round. That was actually a thing at Worlds. Um, crazy as yeah, it sounds. Because there, there was a lot of Lysers and 4 and 9s who would just use Tycoon just to, to have a barrier break in case things went upside down. Just because they did the whole Apocalypse nonsense, so it's just nice to have it. Yeah, turns out uh, having a Fractor that costs 1 to install is pretty darn good. It's pretty right. It's almost an Inti. Yeah, <laughs> almost. Well, right, so you might think, well, since the cards in my hand are not safe, the cards on my, in my board are not safe either, well, if I leave them in my stack, surely they're safe. Surely. They could be, but then again, I play Underway Renovation, so they might not be. You're the worst. You're, you're literally I... the worst. I've, I've loved Underway Renovation ever since <laughs> it came out. I, play, I played it in Grindle with Breaker Bay and Simone Diego. So bonus oh, points if you remember what Simone Diego does. Uh, oh my gosh. What an oh, economy card. That, that's an amazing mm. economy card. Um, yeah. It was. I, I think I'm just going to name this video um, uh, I love what underway renovation quote <laughs> Alex Borrow 2018. I uh, do love it. Uh, it's great. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, it's so dirty. Um, well, it is. And it actually, it actually works surprisingly well with the agenda suite I've got, which is a very odd one, which I've been told. It is. It is quite. I mean, uh, uh, there are lots of 5-3 agendas out there. You decided to go with, well, mm. City Works. I mean, it makes a lot of sense since you're running snares as well, so the cards in your hand are really yeah. not safe at all. It's the thinking man's Obataka project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, okay, so... That, so the synergy with score and uh, a city works project is primarily it's the damage so you do yep. the damage you can also move stuff also works with underway renovation because you get a lot of runners who just decide i'm just going to stall i'm not going to do anything so then i throw down the underway i start milling in cards and then suddenly uh oh you have no cards left i'm just going to score this underway uh city works project anywhere because you can't steal it because you have no cards in your deck and you've got no cards in your hand Ah, were there any games during Worlds where you won due to so-called milling the runner? Um, the... Yes, there was. There was one game against Max who... She lost one levy, and then she had one card. She was drawing, like, mad, trying to find the other one, and she couldn't find it. And she, I think she had one card left, so I just did a value underway renovation. <laughs> just naked. I just... I, she, she had like no points so I just put it out wherever and I just started advancing it and I got rid of the other levy oh my god! 
And then I just started Advancing City Works Project because she couldn't steal them. And uh, she didn't read what the card did. She just saw a five for agenda that was public and tried to take it. And I went, okay, it does four meat damage to you. You have three cards in hand. I'm afraid you're dead. Oh, wow. Wow, that's mean. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and that was and that and that was the game where I rested uh, Ibrahim as well because Ibrahim just helped me see what was in her hand and just make not only good targets it also made me a ton of money with standard procedure standard procedure can make you lots of money yeah I can imagine well I guess that's one way to win make your um make your opponent stumble into cards that they haven't read before uh that's yeah. insane. I, I guess the biggest well, thing with your agenda suite is that it has no project atlas. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Because I'm only using uh, basically six points of five free, uh, six agenda points of five free, and then two underway renovations because I'm playing a 49 uh, card scorp deck. Ah, of course. Uh, so so I was thinking along the logics of my old Asmari deck where it was like I'm using a bunch of five frees, but you need the one point over. And a lot of people are like, you could pick Hostile, you could use Hostile. I was like, well, I can, but Underway is A, more fun, <laughs> 2, works better with my deck, mm. and 3, I don't need a 3 because I've already got 2 reasons, so I'm going to stick with that. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. And then, and, then, and then I also run free standoffs as well, which is a great economy card and also gives me targets for my Ibrahim and my Archer. Yep, definitely need those. Right. Uh, anything else you want to talk about uh, with regards to your squad deck? Um, I guess that I, I'm i just impressed at the fact that it did so well compared to what it should have done. Because um, I know a lot of people were sort of like taking it, like, oh, you can take a 49 card score. <laughs> oh, I'm oh, sure it'll be fine. And then like it was like, oh, he's in top 16. Oh, God, what's he done? <laughs> um, I was also really i was kind of lucky because i got to play against two adams and there's something very interesting about adam as a fun interaction find the truth is very, very helpful in the scorp deck i was uh, playing salem's because uh. <laughs> i was like oh i was like oh did you just show that paper clip last click okay <laughs> uh, salem's you're gone <laughs> oh man that, that, that. nice also nice. also also, the best thing about Adam as well is that i play snare and he only has two cards it's his hand size basically most of the time <laughs> Because they always play one card early and then they run. So in day two, I did actually knock someone out with a snare by turn three. Oh, you played the oh. one Adam player in day two. Yeah, I believe his name was Robert Rob Curry. Yeah. I might have got, yeah. Yeah, he was my second day two matchup. And he was like, you know, before we look at IDs, I think we should uh, consider a two for one. And I went, well, it's the last round in Worlds. I want to you know, try and earn my way in, so I guess we'll play normally, but mainly just because I was too scared to do it, and then he picked out Adam, I was like, damn, I should have two for one, because this was totally my game. Uh... <laughs> well, you I made mean, it anyway. I, mean, I won both games. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I did, but yeah, I've, I'm really happy that I managed to come so far with a deck that I built by myself, because it's what I've tried to do throughout my whole career, is to sort of be able to perform not only as a pilot of a deck but also as a creator of a deck and i'm just really ha happy that yeah. i managed to make an old combo that i used to love really shine in such a competitive environment indeed yeah i mean uh, all credit to you it's not just uh the cool combos that you had and all the jank so-called janky cards but it's also a very yeah. good um meta call uh reading the meta of the most wanted list and figuring that it would be good against the max decks that are out there, and yeah. Yeah, I mean, it works. I think it works against a lot of the decks in the meta. So max is it's an obvious matchup because they start milling themselves. You can start removing key points, but even against like criminals, like you knew what the lies is in the four lines were doing. You know they were going to try an a pop Q. You can really target their key events if you want to assailums or their key breakers because they don't have many. Um, shapers it's good against because they don't have a lot of money so the install breakers get in early and then you Trojan horse them <laughs> I feel like it did a lot of work against different sort of decks mm -hmm. yeah. and I'm, yeah. I'm just really impressed with how well it performed yeah I think people have completely forgotten how dangerous Scorps, uh, uh, Scorp Corp is uh, ever since Sacrificial Construct moved out of the meta I mean people yeah. have been re replacing it with clone chips so now everything's vulnerable to Scorp clone chip isn't gonna save yeah, exactly. you 
Yeah, mm. that's pretty amazing. Right, uh, let's move on to less degenerate bullshit. Um, <laughs> uh, right, so un- unfortunately, unlike with Euros, uh, you did not rep Kumalo at uh, UK Nationals or Worlds. Instead, you went back to your Shaper roots, as previously discussed. Um, yeah, uh, so to, uh, at Nationals, you brought a Reaver Shop deck. But it wasn't yeah, right. Haley Reaver Shop, as uh, most people would uh, expect. It's actually Aesop's Woo. So what was the thought process behind um, re-sleeving uh, this typical Shaper archetype in a different ID in Carbon Air, so Woo? Um, so the idea came across for Swifty, who I want to give mad props for, because he was the one that was the original architect of this deck and has helped build it up from what it was from um, before nationals to what it has been to worlds so this is a sort of a process me and him have done together um Wu is really fascinating to uh, analyze as a runner you know she her ability seems really too niche to be powerful but actually it's that niche effect which makes it perfect for uh, an aesop deck because uh, especially one that's using Reaver, which is a core card of this deck. Um, so, because of Woo, you can basically get out your SMCs whenever you want and basically install whatever programs you need really early, which it's like Haley can't do. Although Haley has the double install, you know, rapid fire process, which is really strong, she can buckle under the pressure of not being able to draw what she needs in time, and Woo just sort of nullifies that. Hmm. That's. That's interesting. I'm still trying to wrap my head around that. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's let's take for example. So in Wu, in this deck, you always want to for an Aesops because you don't need to worry about programs because you can get them out if you want. Yeah. So turn one, I can install Aesops for one credit. I've got four left. I can SMC and then pull out Reeve if I want to. And then if I've got a Harbinger or a Cash in hand or if I just can get one or I've got the money, I can do that and I've already got my economy set up by the first turn i see and basically i am set for the rest of the game right so it seems so i guess the high priority is to get those two cards out asap yeah i, I mean the that's the that's the wondrous like beauty of woo is that you don't have to worry about any of your other programs or anything like that you just have to worry about asops and getting him down as fast as possible and then everything else falls into place Mm. And so at Nationals, I use Cold Read to help mitigate the costs um, because you can just pull out SMC, Cold Read a remote, get the program out, and then you're done. I and see. also Stimac as well because it's a really helpful combination. Right, That now your list makes a lot more sense. I was staring at it and I'm like, four stealth credits with no stealth breakers, really? But yeah. Yeah, yeah. You- it's, it's good for that it's also it was also really helpful in nationals because uh, you could just woo out a breaker and then you're worried about the RFG but you can just cold read mm. so when I was running paperclip I would just cold read and use paperclip and then just trash it and then I could just pull it back out whenever I want because it's paperclip right yeah so and... it, yeah it, it definitely had its uses at the time it was also really good against uh, the CTM decks because it's basically like a mini stim hack I was going to say, yeah, it seems like it's a very good meta call against uh, CTM as well since you want to be running those assets. Yeah. Right. Uh, I guess the most marvellous thing about Reaver Shop uh, when you played it at Nats is that you were playing it even before it became cool uh, when um, the Most Wanted list removed Clone Chip. Uh, I mean, the Clone yeah. Chip was removed from Most Wanted list. So, yeah, how did you manage to get by without Clone Chip for so long? That's ridiculous. Yeah. So that was the thing that me and Swifty were talking about was that as soon as Clone Chip came off the board, this deck became exponentially more powerful because Clone Chip gives you um, a lot of additional triggers. Uh, so before that, we just went, okay, we're going to swap out the Clone Chips for Dirty Laundries because Dirty Laundries is a good run card. It gives you money. That's all that matters at this point. Um, in Nationals, it was really helpful because I think a lot of the opponents I played against were... Uh, mainly Wayland stuff or they were sports stuff they weren't too bad uh, a couple of CTM stuff but it wasn't too necessary for me to cycle out uh, caches or harbingers again and again um, so luckily because of that I could just basically not need clone chip mm. it was just sort of clone chip just it improves what's already been good and it also allows you to try out different things 
So since Nationals, uh, me and Swifty, uh, we did a lot of sort of like uh, deck building and working together. And then at Worlds, we thought, okay, so we've got clone chips. So we're going to take out Paperclip. We've got three influence left. We'll throw in an Imp because Imp is a fantastic uh, card. It is. Yeah. It's, it's a- yeah, it's absolutely spot on. And then uh, Swifty was worried a lot about the one copy stuff I had. So before I had one Stimac and one Turning Wheel. Mm-hmm. But now that I've got Imp, I don't need Turning Wheel anymore because Imp's my new HQ pressure because I can run HQ, Imp something, go in again, Imp, like, look through, and it's a lot easier. So then that allowed us to use two stim hacks, um, And then uh, because of Clone Chip, we just took out Dirty Laundries. Because clone chip, uh, it gives you the, the additional draw which you want, uh, which is the hard. That's the bit you have to learn about Reaver Shop. Is you have to learn about all the triggers that you have to do in their turn and your turn and do it again and again, so you can get that value. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's very easy to miss your triggers as well. Hopefully, um, mm-hmm. no game losses came about uh, during the two days of work. No, I think no. I almost had one because I forgot about memory. That was it, but it was easily fixable, so it wasn't too bad. It was just that I installed Imp and I forgot I had memory, and then I stole a degree mill, and then I shuffled in a program, but I could have shuffled in something else, so it wasn't a big deal. Yeah, um, I mean, that, I, it I, was, but the woo, the woo triggers were pretty fine, and the Reaver triggers were easy to remember. Yeah, um, actually, I, I was kind of hinting at uh, the one of peace in your in your time in your deck, which uh, one <laughs> of your other shot friends has a bit more trouble with in terms of managing game losses. Yeah, that was actually Swifty's idea, and I'm actually really happy he made that choice. So we went down from three harbingers to two harbingers, and then one piece in our time. And peace in our time was basically we agreed was it's your fourth a sop. So if you don't draw a sops, then surely you'll draw the peace in our time first. So then at least you've got some money to keep you floating until you can get everything set up. Yep. And it's a lot more reliable than having a third Harbinger. Harbinger is a fantastic card in this deck. It's also the other reason why I like Woo, because Harbinger is very unreliable in Haley because then you sell it and then you've triggered your Haley ability, and that's never good. Ah, uh, yeah, that makes sense. Mm. So, um, yeah, uh, to move on... Uh, I think some people might be curious in the breaker differences between your mm. national stack and yeah your world stack. It seems like you upgraded. Uh, well, of course your barrier breaker became lady. Um, now that clone chip <laughs> was available, that that seems obvious. Um, decoder though, uh, taking your ever trusty guardian and replacing it with Ngolo. Uh, what are the thoughts behind that one? Yeah, so Ngolo was interesting. It was um. It was so I've been using Gordian for a long time and I love Gordian to death but the problem with Gordian is it only really reliably works in a super glacier meta um, but I noticed uh, Atman especially was being a bit of a crutch it wasn't really doing anything it was just I need an AI breaker Atman is a shaper AI breaker but the problem with it is is that it doesn't really do a lot for you and it costs a lot of money uh, so i looked over the saturday gnk and i saw a lot of people a lot of shapers especially in Haley, were using angolo and i thought well i'll test it out when i get home we'll see how it works and it's incredible because it works as an ai breaker mm-hmm. it works as any other breaker for one interaction and it's your co-gate breakout with incredible stats having two credits to plus four strength to pick up to a six is phenomenally good for a co-gate breaker and so it actually outdoes uh, Gordian in a lot of interactions with uh, Cogates. And even in ones where they have stat Cogates, like paying the slight extra for N'Golo is much more value than just relying on Gordian and an Atman AI. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I didn't think of it that way. But yeah, um, you having, using N'Golo to replace uh, your Atman as, an, as a way to deal with um, Mythic Ice, like Excalibur is... Mm. Makes a lot of sense, and the added uh, efficiency is just icing on the cake. Yeah, exactly. Um, and also swapping out Gebralassi for uh, Net Ready Eyes, which was also Swifty's idea, was a really good choice as well, because it really helps with the problem Nanotech has, which, mm. as you will have learned from my national stream uh, if you've watched it, 
nan attack against strength free ice that's on its own is very annoying oh, oh yeah yeah uh, i don't want to be breaking single architects on the server with uh they're not uh yeah but it also just helps against anansi because if there's one anansi on an mtu server and you net ready ice nan attack is strength free so then you encounter it so you're only paying three credits to pump rather than a very dreadful six <laughs> you never want to pay six to boost nan attack you always want to pay three yeah right yeah, that's that, that's pretty cool. Um, too bad. Uh, I I'm sorry, <laughs> I can't pronounce that it's word. Right. I think uh, I think it's pronounced Gebrelasi, but I might be Gebrelasi. wrong. Gebrelasi. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, too bad it didn't make a showing in your world's deck. Uh, we were this close to a, a Gebrelasi art, art. <laughs> full bleed art. I, I mean, it's it's very unfortunate, but I mean, Gebrelasi is a really fun and interesting card. But um, net ready eyes gives you. A lot more additional value because even if you don't put it on your nanotech you can put it on your lady to help uh things move along uh or even your engolo uh i don't know any strength seven code gates but i know there was some like strength uh free code gates and you don't really want to pay the two credits so net ready eyes was just uh, a more reasonable choice yeah true that true that um. <clears throat> yep all right i guess that's about it for uh, your woo deck well, uh, I mean, it's a mix of innovative cards like Imp. Uh, Imp and Shaper is my favorite as well. Uh, I remember Imp, I, I, Imp. I. Sorry, go ahead. No, I'm just gonna say I just I love Imp as well. Um, it definitely wasn't because I got an Imp promo that I wanted to pack it because Order Shot is not that vain. <laughs> but, but but in all seriousness, Imp is actually it did save me a lot of games like uh, in indexing against sports or MT. And then seeing a surveyor, and you're thinking, okay, well, he's not got any genders return, but I can imp that surveyor, and that's a huge hit against a, a, yeah. a, a, a corp. Or just um, being able to imp an Obataka because yeah. you can't steal it, and they're going to win is huge. Um, or even against CTM, imp is just amazing against NVTs, uh, or even just like other assets you can't break. I yeah. think I won against the sports because I just like, like I just imped, scavenged imped, and then imped again, and I just went over and over. Yeah, no one ever yeah. see, sees imp coming. I mean, it's a very niche yeah. card. Uh, I I used mm. to swap out uh, my legwork influence for an imp, and it was well worth it. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. Also, another sleeper program I really want to give uh, props to was Degder, because not only was it great for Angola because of the memory issue, so uh, also very helpful for cash. Yeah. Give, it's, it's only a slight little boost, but that little boost did win me games. Oh yeah, it, it oh, yeah. definitely means everything. Um, your yeah. caches are now worth five, uh, sorry, six instead of five credits. Uh, yeah, exactly. Good stuff, good stuff. Right, yeah, and it's also a very good uh, meta call in general. Oh wait, there's a there's a program missing from your from your list. Wait a minute, where's the clot? Oh yeah, that's right. So I didn't run clot in this deck. I have had a big hiatus against Clot in Wu. Um, I understand what, why people were afraid of it, but I'm pretty, I think I was fairly confident that Fast Advance wasn't going to be a big issue. And when it was an issue, again, I fall back on my friend Imp mm. because most Fast Advance tools require, you know, Biotic Audacity. Uh, if it's calibration testing, I should be aggressive enough to go in there and trash it. So I felt like Clot was too much of a cushion that I didn't necessarily need uh, in a meta where I knew CTM was going to be strong, MT was going to be strong, Sports kind of worried me a little bit, but like I said, you know, Imp does the work that you needed to do for you, so uh, Clot wasn't really necessary. Mm. It just felt like it was a, a hindrance of two influence. Yep, that makes perfect sense. So for all you players out there who are wondering, how do you deck build? How do you analyze the meta and prepare your deck for it? Well, um, Alex just gave you a very huge crash course. Um, I think Cloud is a card that a lot of players just auto-include, especially if you're already running Clone Chip. But, you know, when you think about it twice, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, you can just deal with fast advance with the tools you currently have. So that's a wrap for this video. But we are not done just yet. Tune in this coming Thursday and Saturday as we uh, hit on to JNet and do a playthrough of the Carbonessa Wu deck and the Scorpios deck respectively. It will be a double hitter game where Alex and I will be talking through our gameplay decisions. It will be 
quite an insightful journey. So stay tuned for that. Until then, thanks for watching and happy net running. See ya!